Uh, hello friends, today we are going to talk about trigonometry limits and various methods of solving trigonometry limit problems. Sometimes we use the method of substitution and sometimes we use a method of factorization apart from the standard method. And I've observed the students are often confused whether to go for substitution method or to go for factorization method. This small video is going to clarify this doubt once for all. So, now let us look at the classification of trigonometry limit. So, here we are. I like to classify trigonometry limit in these three fashions. The first thing when a trigonometry limit problem comes to you, the first thing you should look whether limit x is tending to 0 or it is tending to a non-zero number. If x is tending to a zero number and you see trigonometry function, Remember, it is going to be solved by standard method. If x tends to a non-zero number, you have to be very careful. If x tends to non-zero number, then you have to look whether it is a pure trigonometry function or it is having some trigonometry function combined with some non-trigonometry function. If x is tending to non-zero number and it is pure trigonometry function, then we are going to use factorization method. If it is trigonometry and combine with some non-trigonometry function with x tending to a non-zero number, definitely we are going to make use of substitution method. Hope this small video is going to clarify your doubt about substitution and factorization approach once for all. Shortly I'm going to put another video which is going to discuss standard method factorization method and substitution method along with the examples. Good luck.